to Astory Apothecary. I'm Astory, your cosmetic formulator. And today we are making our summer lotion. Oh my goodness, I have had so many requests for a lighter, thinner lotion as opposed to the emulsified body butter cream. You all know if you've talked to me at all, I love the body butter cream. I don't care what time of the year it is, but not everybody wants a thick heavier cream sometimes you just want something really light and simple um there's also the um body yogurt which is a light cream but this lotion gives you a little bit more um on the emollient oil side but yet isn't as heavy as the body butter cream so anyway that's that um before i get into the actual formula make sure you check out the description box for a link to the formula if you're interested in this one um as well as a link to the shop to any of the other formulas that i may have leave any questions that you may have in the comments below if i leave anything out go over anything too quickly whatever the case may be please be sure to leave comments down below but be nice okay be nice <laughs> um and let's see anything else i guess that's it i'm gonna jump right into it i don't like to do too much chit chat so again this is gonna be our summer body lotion so let's get started i'm gonna start with the oil phase um i am i'm sorry not the oil phase the water phase i am going to put the water phase into a larger container than my oil face normally i would do that the other way around because i like to pour my water into my oil but <laughs> my containers need to be sanitized so i don't have a big enough container that is heat safe to do that in you can do either way it's all right but i just prefer to do the water into the oil because it's easier to make sure i get all of the water out the oils tends to stick a little bit more to the container it's just a it's a me thing it's not that serious anyway and i'm also going to add that right now my hot plate is in the other room we've had a electrical power outlet issue um those hot plates take a lot of power and it doesn't like to um work when i use it on this outlet so i have it plugged up in the other room on a special outlet if you know anything about electric electricity it's a gfi outlet as opposed to a regular one so anyway i'm gonna have to take my oil phase and heat it in the other room instead of doing it here like i normally do on camera but that's literally all i'm going to be doing is melting down everything and i'll bring it back when i'm done with that part so let's get started for our water phase i am of course starting off with the necessary ingredients of distilled water or deionized water will work as well Water is not just a filler ingredient. It is very important. It helps to dilute. It helps to, um, uh, uh, what's the word? Break down ingredients so that they're not so concentrated. Dilute, that's the same thing. Anyway, um, <laughs> it also adds and gives us the much needed hydration. You cannot get hydration without some sort of water. Butters and oils are really great for locking in hydration and um, those sorts of things but you need water to have to have that so please don't think when you see water in a formula of any kind that it is just a filler it's not it's important um so now that i am off of that rant i'm gonna go ahead and add in my water i'm making a large batch um i have multiple orders that i need to fill so of course yours would be smaller but i'm gonna go ahead and do a larger batch here so I'm just using distilled water. You can get distilled water at pretty much any local grocery store. Um, I know for a while they're doing, during the panini, um, it was difficult to find. Um, but it looks like things are a little bit better now. Let's see. I need another gallon. Let me grab it. I will say that it has definitely gone up though just like everything else right um but it's still pretty inexpensive so let's see but if you don't want to use uh water you can use i'm also going to add some aloe liquid you could use full aloe liquid if you wanted you could use a, like a rose hydrosol or 
um, strawberry essence water, um, anything like that, as long as it's a cosmetic grade um, water, you can use it. And those can add nice fragrance. Um, the different botanical waters also have their own benefits. That's up to you. Um, I like to use rose water when I don't want to add a fragrance to something. If I'm making something for sensitive skin or my baby products, I don't use fragrances um, other than I do use lavender um, and certain products. But anyway, um, if you don't want to add a fragrance or anything like that, you can use a essence. And a lot of them smell so good. So, so good. So there is my water and I'm going to go ahead and add in my aloe liquid. So this water phase is just going to be any water soluble ingredient that's not heat sensitive. Um, so for me, that's going to be, so for me, that's going to be obviously the water, my aloe liquid, glycerin, um, as well as a little DL panthenol. So I'm going to go ahead and add in my aloe liquid now. Aloe is just so soothing for the skin. Um, it also helps bring more moisture and hydration, helps a little bit with irritation. It's just so good for the skin. Alrighty, let's go ahead and add in. I am adding propendial, propendial. I have heard this said so many different ways and I don't exactly know the correct way, but there's the name of it, <laughs> which is a humectant. Um, it's not going to leave as much of a sticky feeling as glycerin sometimes can. I'm also adding glycerin. I like to do both because um, I just, I like glycerin and glycerin is a less expensive. So that is a, you know, that helps. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and add in this and then I'm going to add the rest in my glycerin. And here you can also use other humectants, um, sodium lactate, propylene glycol, uh, uh, what is it, butylene glycol. There's lots of different humectants that you can add. Um, if you do decide to change it up, of course, make a small batch, test it out, see how you, you know, how it feels and if you like that feeling. Um, that's the beauty of this and why I like making this base formula and I give you ideas of other things to try and then you can try those other ingredients to make it your own. Um, using a formula doesn't mean that everybody has to have everything exactly the same. You can definitely customize it and make it personalized for you or what your customers prefer, whatever the case may be. Alrighty. So let me add in my glycerin. Glycerin, as we know, is a humectant. It draws moisture from the air into your skin. The best way, as with most humectants, though, is using it in something that already has water in it so it can use that water. Um... So there is that. And I think that is it other than my DL Panthenol. So I'm going to go ahead and just mix that up. And this will go on the heat. This is actually just going to get um, burst in the microwave because I can't put it on the heat. Um, let's see. I'm going to use my smaller scale for my DL Panthenol since it's a powder and it's light. This scale is very sensitive. Um, so I like to use it for any of my smaller ingredients or light powdery ones. And this is linked in the description box below as well as on all of the formulas. I link um, the equipment that I like to use. Uh, I give links to places that I like to buy supplies, all of that. So hopefully... It'll make it that much easier for you to be able to make the formula. So I'm going to go ahead and add in the DL Panthenol. DL Panthenol is another just great skin food. Um, let me, hold on, I can't measure and talk at the same time. It is a vitamin, 
Uh, let's see, almost there. And obviously you don't have to do this formula in ounces. You can do grams. Grams are going to be generally more accurate because you can get much more, much closer to your amounts, tinier numbers. Um, but like I said, with this scale, I I find that it's not um, difficult because it's very sensitive. So yes, D-L-Panthenol is a provitamin B5 and our body readily absorbs it and converts it to the panthenol that we need. It's just great for healthy hair, healthy skin, and it helps with improved hydration, reducing water loss, and maintaining skin elasticity and softness. So it's really great for the skin. I pretty much put it in anything Pretty much in all of my skin formulas that have a water face, I put it in everything. What's that thing? I put that on everything? Yeah, pretty much. Because it's just really, 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 really good for the skin. And it is water soluble. So I just mix it on in. And you'll see that it goes clear. And that's when you'll know that it has been mixed in well. And then I'm gonna put this to the side, but this will get heated. And then we'll go ahead and mix up our oil phase. Okay, so for our oil phase, I'm keeping it very light. There's not gonna be any butters in this particular formula. This is gonna be very light. Um, and we're gonna use ingredients and oils that are gonna be leave a light feel on the skin, hopefully be a little silky smooth. And you know, not just, just not be too heavy when it's hot outside and you don't want a heavy cream or, um, maybe you're working out or anything like that so start with i'm going to start with our barrier oils and i am using first jojoba oil jojoba oil is actually not an oil it is a wax and it is said to be as close to our natural sebum that we make in our own bodies as we can get in a plant oil so we're going to add a little bit of that And jojoba oil is fairly expensive, so um, thankfully you don't need a lot to get a good effect, but you know, you don't want to go overboard. It is a great oil, um, just keep cost in mind, which is important when you're formulating as well. I mean, you can definitely create a product with more expensive ingredients and market it that way because, you know, there is nothing wrong with a little luxury, but if you're trying to be cognizant of pricing keep that in mind keep in mind your ingredients and what they're costing you um sometimes it's worth it i make a retinol serum and retinol is very expensive but it works very well so sometimes you just got to do what you got to do all right the next oil that i am adding is sunflower oil personally i love sunflower oil i use it as much as i possibly can but it is a great oil it is good for mostly anyone um from babies on up multiple skin types and um it's great for infusing other herbs or things into it's very light it has a quick uh absorption rate on the skin so it doesn't you know leave a heavy film or anything like that and i'm gonna go ahead and add in my sunflower oil you can use any liquid oils that you would like to use the you know the choice is yours Again, that's the beauty of a formula where I'm just giving you a base to start with. If there's anything that is specific, then I will definitely tell you that. But here is a part where you can, you know, you can use avocado oil, you can use grapeseed oil, you can use almond oil, you could even use olive oil. Now, if you use olive oil, olive oil is a heavier oil, definitely. And the formula will have information about absorption rates and all of that in, um, you know, and taking that into consideration, but you can use any liquid oils that you want. Or in this case, I am also including an emollient ester. I am going to be using um, 
Caprylic Capric Triglyceride, which again is an emollient ester. It is not a plant oil, but it works similar to oils. So it gives you that nice skin feel, but it's not going to be as heavy and leave a greasy after feel. It absorbs quickly in the skin and it feels silky and, and just luxury after it's been used. So we're going to use a little bit of that as well. You can also use isopropyl mirror state. Um, there's another one and it just went right out of my head, but there are other ester oils that you could use or the emollient esters, I should say. Um, let's see, let me add that in. Definitely don't be afraid to branch out and use ingredients. Um, I know some people say if I can't pronounce it, then I don't want to use it. Well, you know, that's not necessarily the best take because there's lots of things that we might not be able to pronounce. But that doesn't mean that it's not good for you. That's just what it's called. My name is Astari. Many people cannot pronounce my name. But there's nothing wrong with me. I don't think. <laughs> um, but definitely try different things. Um, if there's a product that you love on the market, flip over that ingredient list. And I guarantee you that even though it looks like it may be this weird chemically name, which chemicals are not bad. Everything is a chemical, including us. Water is a chemical, but you know, I digress. Um, a lot of times what looks really complicated is really just the Latin name or the inky name, which is a list of ingredient names that are the scientific name. I don't know if that's the best description, but um, let's see. For instance, let me see if I have it. Here's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna put the inky name of an ingredient on the screen and the first comment that is posted that tells me what that name is. Mm, what shall I do? I think I'll give a discount code. So the first comment, the very first comment that pops up that can tell me what the common name is for this ingredient will get a discount code. All right, so moving right along. Um, so I've added in that and I am going to just mix that up. Really don't have to, it's gonna go on the heat and be warmed up. The next thing that I need to add are my emulsifiers. So we are making a product with water and oil and we know basic science, water and oil do not mix. They need help. That is where emulsifiers come in. I am using emulsifying wax, traditional NF, emulsifying wax NF is oftentimes what it's called as my first emulsifier. Um, this is going to also help to thicken the formula a little bit. But again, this isn't going to be an extremely thick um, product like the body cream. This is going to be thinner, which is what we want. This can go in a pump um, so that, you know, you can throw it in something that can be pump or some sort of a squeeze tube to carry with you if that's what you wanted to do. Okay. All right, and then I am going to also include a co-emulsifier, which is going to be cetyl alcohol. I absolutely love pairing cetyl alcohol with e-wax. Cetyl alcohol is a fatty alcohol. It's not an alcohol like your drying isopropyl alcohol or anything like that. It's a fatty alcohol, so it actually helps with hydrate or moisturization on the skin as well as like I said it is a co-emulsifier so it's going to help your water and your oils blend together and stay together and it also helps with leaving a silky feeling on the skin after dry down so I'm going to add in my cetyl alcohol and I hear my baby girl uh oh I forgot I had a scoop in there I hear my baby girl in the background, so I might need to hurry up. <laughs> she is going to make her presence known. Let's see. 
all right so that is my oil phase i'm going to get my oil phase melted down and my water phase warmed up what i want to do is get my water phase temperature and my oil phase temperature close to each other the easiest thing to do is to look at the highest melting point of your oil phase ingredients um, which is probably going to be for me the acetyl alcohol i have to look at it and basically you want your water phase to be around that temperature so that when you blend everything together it doesn't cause anything in your oil phase to seize up and harden back up that's going to defeat the purpose we need it to be melted we want to have a stable emulsion so i'm going to get both of these melted and warmed and then we'll be back when that is done all right so we are back with our melted oils and heated water i did do a lot of my heat measuring off camera but just use my laser temperature gun and uh, make sure you stir as you measure um, because oftentimes the temperature in the middle is going to be different than the temperature on the top um so we've got these somewhat close together and i am going to get everything together for my stick blender so that that can be ready for me i do want to talk a little bit about your stick blender or immersion blender um obviously these are typically used in the kitchen but we use them in skincare as well as a um, high shear mixer. Um, you have your blade, which helps blend things together. So there are different shapes of the head of mixers. Um, and I find that the ones like this, and I don't even know, I don't have my other one, um, where it's more flat and there are holes on the bottom, but there's not, it's not rounded. I find the rounded ones, that are more like a scoop almost, they tend to cause more air bubbles. And that can be frustrating depending on what you're mixing. So the shape of the head of the immersion blender really does make a difference. This holds a lot of the mixing under this head part and it doesn't cause it to um, make a lot of friction, if that makes sense. Um, so there's that. And this is going to be linked below. This is an Amazon stick blender. I absolutely love it. All right. So I'm going to move some of this stuff out of my way that I don't need. So we can go ahead and mix our oils and our water phase. Let me take this out. You're going to see as soon as you mix these together you're going to see a color change and that is going to be the emulsification beginning to happen um but we're also going to use our stick blender to make sure everything is blended well together so that we have a very stable emulsion so let's go ahead and do that so like i said normally i like to blend my water into my oils but because of my container size and needing something that is heat safe i had to do it the opposite way but it's okay um you it doesn't matter which direction or which way you blend them it it they, they're gonna go together in the same uh pot and be blended so yeah so i'm just trying to scrape everything out because every little bit matters but as you see that um already started to turn a whitish color that is just a sign of the oils and waters beginning to blend. We're gonna go ahead and attach our immersion blender head and get to blending. So I like to leave the head under the surface at all times. That also helps with air bubbles. Um, this one can be adjusted from minimum to max and then it has a high and low. So I usually start on low on the minimum there's no need for anything crazy, not in this anyway. Oh, well, it would help if I plugged it up. Hold, please. Okay, let's try that again. <laughs> All right. So you'll see even on low and the low setting, it's still pretty um, intense. So I don't like to do it too high. So I am just blending.
because there is so much in this container I'm trying to be really careful but normally you could just let it go blend it for a little bit and let it go I'm just doing an initial blend <laughs> And after an initial blend, um, it's already starting to cool a little bit and get slightly more viscous, which is, that's all a good sign. That's what we want. Um, and then I let it sit for a few minutes, come back, blend it again. And I'm going to keep doing that until it starts to thicken up. Once it starts thickening up, I'm not going to necessarily need the stick blender anymore. I will use it when I mix in my preservative, which we will go ahead and measure next. Um... I'm making a larger bait uh, batch, so I'm not adding fragrance to this whole batch. I'll be separating it out to add fragrance for other orders. Um, but when we add in our preservative, that's when you could add your fragrance if you were just making a small batch of one fragrance. You could also add color if you wanted. I don't. You could add um, a water soluble dye um to your water phase before you mix it with your oils. You could also use an oil soluble lake colorant in your say in your fragrance oil or you could add it to your oil phase um there are liquid colorants as well so you could use those also but i never color my lotions or anything like that so i'm not i won't be doing that but i'm just gonna keep mixing until it starts to thicken up and cools off to under 122 degrees which is the temperature that we need for our preservative which is going to be liquid germal plus you know, I love to use that one for these um, formulations because it's such an easy preservative to use. And I'm sorry if you can hear my baby girl in the background. She is waiting on me to get finished and I'm trying to <laughs> hurry up here. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and continue to mix it until it starts to thicken. Add in my preservative and I will be back when it's time for that, for the preservative and all of that. Future Astery here. I had to come back and do a voiceover for this section. There was some construction going on in the uh, unit upstairs and it was just a lot of noise in the background. But basically I just came back and I um, did some more mixing. You're going to see that I checked the temperature to see where it was at and it was at a good temperature to go ahead and add in the preservative. I'm double checking the formula real quick <laughs> um, and I am pouring out my preservative. Again, I'm using Liquid Germal Plus and it is very important to be accurate with your percentage rates with your preservatives. Um, too little obviously is not going to preserve your product enough, but too much can also be irritating to the skin. So just make sure that you are reading your manufacturer's instructions for the particular preservative that you're using and also check any pH um, requirements. So I'm going to go ahead and add in my preservative and I'm going to blend this again. Definitely want to blend very well and make sure all of that is mixed in well to the formula. The last thing you want to do is not have your preservative blended in well. So I'm going ahead and I'm doing that. And I am going to um, actually after that just let it sit. It's still not cooled down enough to where I want it to be. Um, so I'm going to let it continue to cool after I have blended. I'm going to put a paper towel over the top because it's still kind of warm and I don't want any condensation to build on say a lid or something and drip back down in with no preservative in it. So I use a paper towel to catch the um, condensation but also keep anything from dropping into it. So that is that and I'll actually be back the next day. All right, we are back. Our lotion is cooled and I have set up to um, put some fragrance some and put some in some bottles but first we need to check our ph so in order to check our ph we of course need our ph meter which i have this link down below um some distilled water and some separate beakers so one of these i'm going to put some distilled water in to rinse off my ph meter
And then the other one I'm going to use to measure the pH of my product. And it's not difficult. It can be a little tedious depending on where the pH is, but all you're gonna do is make a 10% solution of your product, in this case, my lotion. And how you can do that, I usually do this part in grams. So I'm just gonna change my measurement over to grams. Okay. So I've just changed my mode over to grams. And I usually do eh, 10 grams total. So 10% of 10 grams is one gram. So I need one gram of my product. And that means I need nine grams of water. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. Um, and that might be a little bit too much of a, nope, there we go, dilution. Um, but no, that'll work. That's a little bit over, but that's okay. And I'm going to pull out a clean dropper here. And then we'll just go till we get to 10 grams. This dilution works for the particular meter that I have because it um, is not meant for thick solutions. There are meters out there that can measure thicker solutions and then you can skip this step. Although it is still a good idea to dilute it because it saves product. You don't wanna use up all your product checking the pH. So it's definitely still up to you, even if you have a meter, um, because you do need to take a little bit of the product out from your main batch and put it into a separate container when you check the pH. You don't wanna just be dipping the pH meter in your whole batch. So I'm just gonna stir this a little bit to try to mix that in. And it is okay to dilute it. It does not affect the overall pH of the product like diluting it doesn't mean that somehow this is gonna cause your reading to be off the um, distilled water doesn't affect the pH that much and again instead of pouring out a bunch of the product to be able to test with my pH meter I only need a little bit but my pH meter is not the kind that can measure thick solutions so I always dilute it so I've taken my pH meter out of its little cap and its uh, solution and I'm gonna rinse it. Oh, I'm gonna turn it on, rinse it. Okay, and it literally says, the instructions say, shake it off. <laughs> okay, I've turned it on. Now I'm gonna place it in the solution, stir it around a little bit. And... Let it sit until I get a smiley face. All right, I have a smiley, well, I had a smiley face. Okay, I don't know if you'll be able to see it, but it's at 4.65 right now. And actually, that's not a bad pH reading. Between 4.5 and 5.5 is what you want. So I'm actually not going to mess with it. I'm going to leave it right where it is. That's a good range for my preservative and the other ingredients that are in there. If you wanted to get it a little bit closer to five, you could add a drop of your buffer solution. So this is my sodium hydroxide buffer solution. This is a 10% solution I wrote on the lid and I have since accidentally sprayed it with alcohol so it came off but this is 10% sodium hydroxide 90% water and I could literally add in fact I might do that just to show you what I mean but you can add one or two drops of that to raise the pH of it now when you are adjusting the pH you want to add that to your main batch stir it well let it sit for about a minute and then retest which means that you need to dump your old 
dilution and clean that out and then make a brand new one. I'm going to go ahead and... Literally, I'm just going to add maybe like three or four drops. This is a big batch, so it may take just a little bit more than normal. In a smaller batch, maybe a drop. You could also use um, uh, what is it called? TEA? No. Try it. I cannot remember the name of there's too many T names in my head right now. This is not gonna work. I need a longer spatula. Hold that thought. Okay, got me another spatula. Oh, look at that consistency. So you see it still has a you know a little thickness, but it's very loose to go in a pump type lid. But I'm going to make sure that's all stirred in. 